And Ron Darling, Keith Hernandez with you today as the Mets finally get back to action as they play a doubleheader with the Miami Marlins. The Mets have not played since last Wednesday when they played the Marlins in Miami. Their game Thursday and then their weekend series over the weekend against the Yankees were postponed because of two positive COVID tests. The Mets have two players and two coaches not with the team today presumably because of COVID positive or contact tracing. So the Mets haven't really been able to do much. They did have a workout yesterday. So the question is, Keith, how does a team bounce back after not having had any real baseball activity for the better part of a week? Well, well, Gary, I can only surmise here. I've never experienced this mm. in my playing day, having five days off in the middle of the season. How it will affect the team. They were going for a four-game sweep in Miami. They were getting some momentum. Now that got stopped. I don't know how it it's going to go going forward individually Ramos will it help him mm. the five days off clear his head Rosario too you had Nemo that was red hot and, and Cano how is it going to affect them that's why they play the game you know Keith I was just thinking that as far as a time span it would be a long all-star break right but it's so much more than that because they were going to take the field they were called off the field um, they know they had some positive tests they didn't know how many they would have they didn't know if they'd have to stay in Miami or fly back to New York which they did do so it was very difficult but the right elixir might be this team Miami because on August 7th Miami beat the Mets here and went to seven and one since then they're five and six and 0-5 against the Mets. Meanwhile, the presumption was that Jacob DeGrom would take the hill tonight so that he could pitch tonight and pitch Sunday against the Yankees. But DeGrom threw a full bullpen yesterday, so he is not pitching until tomorrow. Rick Porcello gets the first game start tonight. Well, he hasn't started uh, since the 16th of August. He pitched against the Phillies that night and gave up four runs in six innings. So uh, six innings would work fine in a game like this. And Porcello trying to get on the winning track again. Porcello in game one, Seth Lugo in game two. The Mets playing a pair of seven inches hitting fifth and seventh as the Marlins try to snap the Mets three game winning streak by the time this series is over on Thursday night the Mets will have played the Marlins seven consecutive times. Wow. Here's the Toyota numbers for Rick Porcello. 344 career starts. This is only his second against the Mariners. One win in the National League 149 in the American. Pitching on eight days rest. Jonathan VR leads off the first pitch of the night. And your Lexus Metropolitan defense with Cano DHing today. McNeil plays at Segunda Base. JD Davis at third. Petey over at first. And we can go to the outfield. And there's a Lexus outfield. Dominic Smith in left. Brandon Nemo, Conforto. Uh, those are three hot hitters right there. It has nothing to do with defense. I just thought I'd throw it in there. <laughs> you know, for a guy who was so <laughs> prideful of his defense, it's amazing how many. Guy go Mets starting lineup of note. Jeff McNeil batting eighth, only the second time in his career. And check out the bench. Juan Lagares, our old friend, is back. And Patrick Mazika, a catcher, has been called up as well with Tomas Nito and Andres Jimenez both going on the injured list. Land Rover above and beyond numbers. We've seen Dan Castano already this year. Um, he's had some starts where he was the opener. I would think in game one here, he's a pure starter. This is numbers again. So he raced them past you. Uh, walks have hurt him. He's usually known in double A. That's where he came from uh, as a strike thrower. Doesn't walk many people. So far, he's going to. The fish defense on the infield. Alfaro, as Gary mentioned, is back behind the plate. This kid at first base, Levin Diaz, has really kind of caught my eye. He's very athletic. It looks like he has a very good glove. We can thank you off to the outfield. <laughs> uh, Dickerson, Lewis Brenson, who really hasn't come around offensively for them, but he's a fine center fielder, can go cover a lot of ground. And they got, I got to mention it, too.